It isn't very often that we run across two species of fish that are so uniquely qualified to live together in a community tank that they simply take your breath away. I'm talking about the Ember Tetra and the Celestial Pearl Daniel. I hope you'll join me today as we look at this two species of fish and the unique qualities that they have to live together in harmony in a small nano-sized tank. I hope you'll join me as we discover these two amazing and beautiful fish. Just over a year ago, I started out working with this 20 gallon tank and I became so frustrated with the design technique that I had planned for it. It just wasn't turning out. So I embarked on a journey to try to find the most unique and beautiful escape that I had ever done and one that was so different from anything that I had ever done before. The fish that are in this tank were really the answer to what I was looking for. There's also a few other components that go along with this that really make this one of the most exciting scapes that I've ever done because it's so beautiful in so many ways, but it's such a departure from anything that I've done before. I hope you'll join me as I tell you the story of how this 20 gallon became one of the most beautiful tanks in my gallery. So putting this scape together really was something that was frustrating from the get-go. I had a beautiful 20 gallon Leland tank here that uh, was just a really beautiful tank. It's low iron, it's got just about everything you'd want in a tank. The only thing that was missing really was a filtration system of some kind that really um, kind of hit away. I don't usually like tanks that have a hang off the back filtration or anything like that. I like something that really is a little bit more um, geared towards uh, having everything enclosed, but I was going to really kind of try to figure out my way through this uh, after I had scaped it. So basically I proceeded with scaping it and uh, I came up with a design that I thought was pretty nice. I was using maple stone. I used the piece of wood that you see in the center here, uh, which is a piece of spider wood that was well seasoned. I had had that in several scapes over the last year or two and I knew um, what I wanted to do with it and I knew that it would fit in with the design that I wanted. I just didn't know really how I was going to get to the point of designing this tank the way I really wanted it and it was sort of frustrating from the get-go. Um, I was going through some of the stuff in my stock room of tanks and I noticed that one of the uh, Aqua Top 5 gallons that I had, it was a Pisces series, had a crack in the glass and I probably did that moving stuff around and I just didn't realize that it was broke and I decided, you know, I'm going to take the filtration system off that. Now it was only for a five gallon, I wasn't sure how this was going to work, but I thought, you know, I want low flow but I want good filtration. It has a three-stage system in it. It had the ceramic, the sponge, and the carbon. And uh, so it had everything that I was looking for. And I just wasn't sure about flow, whether it was going to be enough to get 20 gallons uh, going well enough to uh, you know, cycle the tank in a way that uh, um, really was going to uh, you know, make it make it uh, sustainable for fish. But then I had thought about the fact that, you know, this tank has been running now for eight months. It's, it's already cycled. I just don't like the design of it. There's so many things that it's already got. All I really need to do is play around with the design. So I let this tank sit for approximately eight months and I really didn't do anything with it. I really spent time staring at it and trying to figure out why I was so frustrated with the design. I had a, uh, a stock of fish in there. I had auto sink lids. I had some quarries. I had some uh, nearite snails in there. I had some shrimp in there and uh, a Papua New Guinea rainbow uh, fish. The uh, uh, feather fin uh, rainbows, if you're familiar with those, they're, they're nice little fish. And I just, 
it just didn't do anything for me though. I was just so frustrated and not really knowing where to go with this. So a couple of months ago, I had uh, decided to go on a trip with my son to Montana. And during that time, I thought that, you know, this trip is just going to be relaxing. I'm going to enjoy myself and just spend some time with my son and not really put a lot of thought into aquariums and, and, and that kind of thing. So we went up to Glacier National Forest and, uh, or National Park, I should say, and uh, did some hiking and screwing around up there and went uh, on a hike that took us up to a place called Flathead Lake. When I got there, I looked in the water at these stones that were in there, and I just had never seen anything like them. They were a sort of a coral color, and they're the stones that you're seeing in the tank here right now, but I, they just had this beautiful coral color to them that I had never seen before, and I really had no idea you know what they were really uh, all I knew is that they were really pretty they were really unique and that I really liked them so basically I knew that you can't take stones out of a lake in a national forest like that it's not the right thing to do and I wasn't going to try to sneak them out or do anything like that so I sort of frustrated because I was like where do I get these stones at so I started talking to some people at the park there and they basically told me that these were very unique to this particular area and uh, you know there are properties along the lake that are not part of the national park go find them you know somebody that maybe will let you come down on their beach and, and grab some of these stones so I had a friend that lived in Kalispell and happened to live on Flathead Lake and I took uh, a drive over there and I talked to him and he said yeah you know take as many as you want of these and so I basically took a, a backpack full of them and decided that um, you know I was gonna go ahead and get them home and see what I could do with this tank that I was so frustrated with to see if I could work in a design that uh, really was uh, unique in some way or another so uh, I totally dismantled the tank. I took all of the fish out of there that I, or at least I thought I took all of the fish out of there. There's a little component to this story that uh, goes on a little bit further here. But anyways, I had taken everything out of the tank except for that piece of wood in the center. I had that filtration system in place there from the aqua top. I really uh, was having good luck with it. It had real low flow. It was a great... Uh, a great filtration system for the um, uh, the rainbow fish, uh, the Papua New Guinea rainbow fish collection that I had, and uh, it seemed that they were thriving. All the water parameters were perfect. This thing had been running for eight months, so I knew that it was really well established. And uh, I just thought, you know, I'm going to dismantle this thing, take all these fish out of here, and I'm going to redesign this tank. So basically, I salvaged all of the plants, the Anubias, the uh, swords, uh, some of the um, uh, ferns that were in there. Um, I don't remember exactly what ferns were in there. I didn't end up keeping those particular ferns. I ended up with what you see in there now. But um, I really was going to you know, try to utilize as much of the materials as I could. So I was, I was doing this one night and I was designing the tank. I had my fish in a holding tank that had you know, been established for a while, keep, kind of keeping it as a quarantine tank. And so I put all of those fish in there and uh, decided that uh, you know, I was just gonna redesign this thing as best I could with these new rocks. So I took those rocks and I basically just started going to town on it and I was moving them around and it was just flowing out of me. I just absolutely was having a fantastic time designing this thing. So as you can see um, in the picture here, the, the rule of thirds really is a triangular sort of motion with the contents of the hardscape in your aquarium. And also there is the back to front on this thing. As you can see from this side view that I'm doing right now, um, you can see that the, uh, the
the uh, substrate in the front is lower and gets higher as you go to the back and that's the whole idea behind this thing is to have that sense of dimension um, you know going uh, from back to front uh, where it looks as though it's bigger than what it really is so I got the rocks all in there and I got the scape done and I absolutely fell in love with it but as I was doing that I was watching George Farmer he was visiting a guy up in Sussex uh, in England and uh, the guy had a tank that was similar to what I was trying to design not the same rocks or anything like that uh, but you know it was very similar in so many ways that I thought wow that's really cool and then on the screen comes up George says oh you've got ember tetras in here and you've got celestial pearl danios and I looked at those fish together and I thought that's what this tank needs this is absolutely what this tank needs so I sort of went out on this journey of trying to find some ember tetras and celestial pearl danios we're in this lockdown it's hard to find fish but i had 13 ember tetras i had actually 26 of them in a bigger tank um, a 50 gallon and i thought you know i'll take 13 of them out and put them in this tank and then I went out and I found five celestial pearl danios because I really didn't want to put any more than that in there. And as I was designing this, I was just falling in love with the whole thing. It turned out to be just the most unbelievable and stunning scape to me. I love the rock. I love the, the fish in there together. Everything was going really great. <laughs> One morning I get up and I look in the tank and here is this feather. Um, finned um, rainbow fish, this Papua New Guinea fish that somehow I had missed taking out of there and he'd been through all of this redesigning and everything and somehow survived it. I was going to take him out and I thought, you know, if he survived that, I think that's pretty incredible. I'm going to sort of leave him in this whole tank uh, set up here and, and let him just sort of be with the rest of these fish. Now basically if you look at this tank it's really geared more towards um, the rule of thirds or the golden ratio. Um, I didn't think I was going to achieve that but I did. Um, the rock to your left facing you in the back is a little bit taller than I would like it to be and I think I can probably tilt that a little bit I just haven't really taken the time to do it but I think that's what I will basically do over a period of time is probably um, just you know uh, make that rock sit a little bit lower so that it has a true um, golden ratio or rule of thirds to the design that makes the, the tank look proper. I want to tell you that, you know, sometimes when you're designing a tank, the design doesn't always come to you right away. And that's really the moral to this whole thing, is to understand that sometimes your frustration and stuff is geared towards something that if you just relax your mind and walk away from it, it'll come to you in time and it will present itself at the right moment and I think uh, that's kind of where I was at with this whole thing is just finding that right scenario and when I saw those rocks which I didn't think I would ever find them anywhere else and I was able to bring some of those home and I saw that uh, video with George Farmer working with a gentleman up in Sussex England and I saw the the combination of the ember tetras and uh, the celestial pearl danios I just knew that I had found the exact design that I wanted. I really want to thank you guys for spending time with me today and listening to this because it does tell you that, you know, sometimes we just have to rest our minds a little bit and, and things will come to us. Thank you for watching the video. Thank you for spending time with me today. I do hope that at some point you will hit that like button, you'll hit the subscribe button, 
and you will also leave your comments. Your comments mean more to me than you will ever know. It is so important to me that those comments um, really uh, are geared towards things that you want to know in the future or something about the video that I just presented to you. If you don't like something that I said or you don't like the design or if you have questions about the design or any other aspect about this uh, video, please leave a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, I love talking to you guys and I know that it's really important to get that feedback. So hit that like button, like I said, the subscribe button and uh, hit that bell at the top. Uh, I think it's on your top right there. I'm not positive about that. But if you would do that, I would sure appreciate it as well because that tells me that uh, you're interested in uh, content that's coming up and that sort of thing. And then you won't miss any videos that I have that are coming out. Again, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Thank you for uh, you know really supporting me on this channel. It's growing and we're getting to a point where I think that it's really going to turn into something great, and I really do appreciate it. Again, thank you so much. We will uh, be doing some great things here in the near future. We've got some really fun surprises coming up, and I hope that you will stay tuned, and we will talk again soon. Thank you so much. Again, thank you guys for the support. I really appreciate it. Uh, this has been such a fun video to do because the story behind this whole adventure of putting this tank together has been, um, it's, it's just been insane, but uh, it's fun. Like I said in the video, do not give up, be patient. Sometimes walk away from the project if you don't think it's right and uh, put some new perspective on it. And sometimes things just come to you. It just kind of happens that way. Again, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment because I love to hear from you guys. I want to know what you think about these particular fish. If you are keeping these same fish, these Ember Tetras and Celestial Pearl Danios together, let me know because I would really like to know what your thoughts are on this as well. Thank you again, and we'll see you on the next one.